Well, right now, most farmers across Louisiana are looking for some rain. Some parts of the state have seen less than an inch of rain since the beginning of June. This week in Louisiana Agriculture's Avery Davidson is standing by with this week's special guest to find out just how dry things have become out there. Avery? Thanks, Mike. It is extremely hot out here already. Probably beads of sweat forming on my forehead. And to talk about the weather we've been having lately, joining me is LSU Ag Center climatologist and WAFB chief meteorologist Jay Grimes. Jay, what is this weather pattern we've been having for just the past couple of weeks where it's like all heat, no rain? It's a situation where we've got a big ridge of high pressure in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere acting uh, like a, basically an umbrella in terms of rainfall. But more importantly, it's a suppressor. So we're not only is it keeping the rain away, we're not even getting any cloud cover. When you have these clear skies day after day like we've had lately, that added sunshine just further bakes the ground, which heats the air even more. So we've been flirting with uh, highs, near record highs, especially in the southern part of the state. And uh, unfortunately, as we've gone through the weekend, it's continuing and it looks like it's going to continue into the week as well. And more dry weather, no rain, more heat means that you've got soil moisture problems as well. Uh, I heard you mention something about soil, mo soil moisture loss of about a quarter inch a day right now. Somewhere in some parts of the state, it's upwards of two tenths to a quarter of an inch a day or, you know, in round numbers, about an inch, an inch and a half a week in terms of moisture loss. And that's if it's there. The thing is, the soils are so dry, what you don't have, you can't lose. But even for those folks that are doing irrigation or for a matter of any kind of pumping that's going on, water loss from the surface is about an inch to an inch and a half a week. So that's a lot of water that's going up into the air. And when you don't have rainwater washing across the fields and going out into streams and the like, you also have a problem with salt water, especially in places like Vermilion Pair. Uh, we understand, talking to some of the uh, uh, rice specialists down along the coast in southwestern Louisiana, that there are at least a couple of places where, with the low water flow in the rivers and bayous, that we're starting to see a little uh, salt water encroachment inland. And that may be creating a bit of a problem for freshwater resources for the rice farmers down there which means that more and more people are turning to the pumps. And of course, that's a costly endeavor in terms of fuel just to drive the pumps to pull the water out of the ground. Um, turning the page a little bit, we're about a month into hurricane season right now. And of course, this ridge of high pressure, while it's bad for the, the drought conditions we're experiencing, it's good at keeping hurricanes and tropical systems away. Yeah, it is. There's no question about it. So there's one of the issues about a trade-off. Uh, drought is uh, a good thing from a tropical threat standpoint, but it's certainly an issue for our ag uh, people all across the state. When we look at the hurricane forecasts, there's I don't want to call it good news, but certainly uh, most of the experts are saying that this season won't be as active as it's been in recent seasons. But I want to caution Louisiana residents, don't look at that as an opportunity for us to have a stress-free hurricane season. We're still expecting no less than three or four storms in the Gulf of Mexico, and that right there is enough to get you up on the edge of your seat. And in fact, if you look at the last eight years in Louisiana, we've had 15 named storms impact our state in one way or the other. Of course, Katrina and Rita come to mind, but there are a handful of other storms, including last year's Gustav and Ike. We've had four years in the last eight years where there's been two or more storms impacting our state. So uh, uh, there is no reason to be thinking that uh, this is going to be a quiet year for Louisiana. And taking a look at that graph of the first storm you have on there, 2001, Allison was not even a hurricane when it hit Louisiana. No, matter of fact, it was kind of a convoluted subtropical storm, but especially in the Florida parishes and areas in south central Louisiana, it is a record rainmaking storm. So we've had a variety of storms with a variety of impacts. Again, Katrina and Rita, obvious impacts there. Gustav, another one that really beat up the southern part of the state, but created problems all the way into northern Louisiana. But then you have the oddities like Allison, record rains in certain part of the states. Ike, last year's Ike made landfall over in Galveston, and yet it created more coastal flooding than any of the storms we've mentioned thus far. So it doesn't take a landfall to be a problem for South Louisiana especially, and because of this elevated almost hyperactivity in terms of landfalls and impacts on our state, it's imperative that people have their personal and business plans in place right now during this quiet spell because chances are sometime this season you're going to have to use it. 
That's good advice. Thank you very much. Jay Grimes Pleasure with the LSU Ag Center and Chief Meteorologist at WAFB. Mike, uh, I know you're in the air conditioning and you're probably enjoying it a lot. I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Avery. And yes, the air conditioning here in the studio is working perfectly.